Hi Year 12, um, Miss Murray here. I thought I would record a lesson for you today um, to talk you through what your next step of your coursework needs to be. Um, obviously this week Mr Davis is setting you all of your lessons but as I said last week on top of that you need to be um, doing your coursework as well. So it is a little bit extra, um, but I think this is a really good time to get a head start on your coursework um, so that we can finish that as soon as possible. So that, that when it comes to year 13, um, we've sort of finished our coursework by January and then can um, really focus on exam, exam prep for your A-levels. So I, this is probably going to be a little bit long because there's quite a lot I need to talk you through. Um, so I apologise for that. And you all know I love to talk. Um, but I think it's going to be really useful and um, it'll really set you up for coursework. So you've seen this PowerPoint. This is what I set you um, ooh, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, but I just want to talk you through exactly what I mean by this. So what is the NEA? So the NEA, uh, it stands for Non-Examed Assessment. So it means that it will be marked by myself and Mr Davis as your media teachers. It's not marked by the exam board. Um, but it is obviously moderated by the exam board, but it's not a sort of typical sit down doing an exam. Uh, it's coursework. So it's practical. It's creative. Um, you complete it independently using the brief of your choice. Now, when I say you complete it independently, it means that you haven't got as much input from your teachers as you would for, say, exam preparation. So it is very much down to you to show your skills. Um, obviously, we'll guide you through it. We'll show you how to do things as I'm doing now. Um, but it's up to you to complete it. It makes up 30% of your overall media A-level grade. So as you know, 35% is paper one for your cert next year, 35% then is paper two, and then 30% is your media A-level coursework. So it's really, really important that you do really well on this coursework so that you can go into the exam next year already with an A in your coursework. So being on an A for 30% of your entire course, that means that if you don't do quite as well in your exam, you can almost be saved by your coursework because it can um, really boost your grade up. And because you've got quite a while to complete your coursework, there's no reason for it not to come out an A or an A star. Okay, so uh, what you've done over Easter, you've all sent me your proposals. Um, so thank you for sending those in. I did have to chase some of you, but eventually I got them all. Um, they were very much completed to different standards. Some of them really, really detailed, really impressed by them. Others sort of minimal, seeing as I sent you two weeks to do that. Um, but I've sent you all feedback, so hopefully you understand my expectations a little bit more now. So for this coursework, it's 60 marks. So it's 30% of your A-level grade, 60 marks in total. Now, you will have 25 marks maximum for application of knowledge and understanding of the media theoretical framework to create a media product. So what that means in sort of simpler terms is all of the theory that we've been looking at for the past year, have you understood that theory? Can you apply it to your own product? So for example, um, if you're looking at gender performity and Judith Butler, have you shown that your uh, your artist or the person on the front of your magazine, um, have you shown that they go against that idea or they go for that idea? So looking at how you understand that theory and how you can apply it to your own work. Now, that's obviously just one example. We can look at loaded, loads of different theory, uh, theorists throughout making our product, but we'll come back to that. Um, 25 marks for the online media product. So again, it's understanding the media theoretical framework and creating a media product. So same thing, but for the website. And then digital convergence, which I had quite a few questions about. So essentially what you're doing for this coursework is you are creating a fully formed product. So either the TV show, the radio, the magazine, the music video as its own product being supported by the online media product. So the online element. So if I was going to make a magazine, uh, if I was making a real magazine in the real world, I wouldn't just put out a magazine. That magazine would also have a website. If I was a music artist, as a music artist, I would also have a website. If I was a new TV show, I would have a website. I would have social media. 
So that is what the second part of the product is. And I'm going to show you a really good example of that in a sec. If you haven't already looked at this. And that digital convergence is how those two products work together. So are you putting in hashtags um, and like at usernames and things in your first product? Are each of your products promoting each other? So we're going to have a look at Veronica's in year 13. So she finished her coursework back in January um, and she did the, the magazine. Now, the brief last year was um, a topical magazine. So she, she's gone for fashion, which unfortunately you guys can't do this year because you're doing current affairs. So she's done a fashion magazine. It's so slightly different to what you guys will be doing. But I just want to show you um, her actual product. So this is her blog. So this is what you guys are going to be creating this week, which I'll go through you, with you in more detail a little bit later. So she's got all of her research. So she's looked at different fashion magazines. She's got a project proposal. She's looked at genre and she sort of um, picked that apart. Sorry, that will, when that loads properly, that won't be blurry. My internet's a little bit slow, um, unfortunately. <laughs> so, but you can see that she's sort of unpicked the genre conventions. She's looked at theory that she's going to use. Um, she's included her own photography, which is really, really important for all of the briefs. It has to be your own photography. And then she started to put together her uh, magazine. Now, this is what she had before I gave her feedback. And this is what she had after I gave her feedback. So you can see it looks like a real magazine. Um, and she's got this. This is a really good example of digital convergence here that www.secretmagazine.com. She's advertising her second product, her website on her cover. And this is her second cover. Now, if you've read the brief requirements um, carefully, I know a lot of you are doing magazine, you'll see that you have to complete two covers. So like a summer and an autumn issue, which is what Veronica has done here. So that's her magazine. Then she started on her website research. So she's looked at, well, OK, Cosmopolitan is a really popular magazine. Let's look at their website, Vogue, Elle, all of those as examples. So let's have a look at her website now find the link for it so you've seen her first product those two magazines this when it eventually loads is her second product so it's the that second 25 marks so I'm looking at this as if it is an actual magazine's website. Sorry, this is taking a very long time to load. OK, so welcome to Secret Magazine. This is what she's called her magazine. And we've got sort of scrolling images on here of her two um, models from her two magazines. She's got these on here um, and you can click on it and buy it. It's got the prices on there. Um, and she's also got other working pages. Because we want it to look like a real website, it needs to act like a real website. So it can't just be a home page. Now, I've got this link on the PowerPoint that I sent you. I'm going to let you guys have a look at that yourself, because, as I said, my Internet's being really slow and I don't want to upload a two hour video of me waiting for websites to load, because I'm sure you'll get very annoyed at that. Um, so I'll give you a chance to have a look at that in your own time. That's a really, really good example. So I'm going to go through each of the um, briefs in a little bit more detail now. Um, so one thing I do apologise, I left this off the last PowerPoint I sent you. And I think it caused a little bit of confusion. I did not specify the target audience that you have to aim your product at. Now, for all of you, the exam board states that it has to be for a socially conscious 16 to 25 middle to up market demographic. So whether you're doing television, magazine, music video, 
or radio, that is your audience. Okay, 16 to 25, middle to up market demographic. So sort of middle class or upper class and within that age bracket. So television and online, obviously this is the um, documentary. It's, I think it's a really interesting brief this year. Um, and most of you, um, the few of you who picked this um, as your brief, have a really clear idea of what that is because you're already interested in um, television and documentary. And I've given you feedback on that. So I'm not going to say too much about that because you've already got your individual feedback. But just keep in mind, this is your demographic. Um, radio online, I don't think any of you went for radio online, um, which I think is probably a good thing. It's a really difficult um, brief to do, particularly as we don't have um, a lot of sound recording equipment in school. Um, but if you're wanting to obviously just have a look through that. Now, this was the most popular one, the magazine and online. Um, lots of you didn't quite understand this idea of current affairs magazine. Lots of you sort of just looked at teenage magazine, fashion magazine, etc. That is not what the brief is stating. If you create a fashion magazine or a sports magazine, you have not fit this brief. So you would you would automatically fail. However, however good that magazine is, you haven't fit the brief. So you really need to look at this idea of current affair magazines. Now we study the big issue, which is a current affair magazine. So you all understand what that looks like. I've um, given you other examples like Time magazine. So have a look at those over the next couple of weeks. Um, current affair does not mean it has to be exactly what's going on now. Lots of you have said, my cover is going to be on coronavirus. OK, yes, it's a current affair that's going on right now, um, but it doesn't have to be that topic. It, I want you to pick a topic that you're interested in. If you are interested in celebrity culture and the dangers of it, look at that. If you want to look at immigration, if you want to look at... Um, inequality of women in the workplace look at that if you want to look at um uh sports and how uh lots of um sports people misuse drugs in order to be more successful look at that it could be any topic that you are interested in that is a current a current topic you could look at trump you could look at politics you could look at the grime scene in london it's it's really up to you but please make sure you're looking at this the first two editions. So two magazine covers you need for this and their contents pages. So you're going to need two different topics. I don't want the first two magazines to be on the same topic because that would just be boring and repetitive. So I would pick two contrasting um, and starkly different. So my first one, I might do um uh, body shaming and for the second one I might do the misuse of drugs in sports so two quite different things for my two covers and again your target demographic is socially conscious 16 to 25 middle to up market demographic um, music video so a couple of you went for this um, really interesting one this one I think because it's a protest song which can be um, interpreted in a lot of different ways so it could be sort of the more obvious, like against war, against politics, or it could be protest like um, Katy Perry's Raw is a protest song because it's her protesting her right to be a strong, powerful woman. It's up to you how um, you interpret that. So that's a really interesting one. With the music video and online, I've, I've put an example of this on the website, which I'm going to show you in a sec, but you've got to keep in mind, you are using a song that is already out there from a band or an artist that's already out there. You are creating a fictional artist or band who have sort of brought this song out. So say I choose Katy Perry's Raw, I'm not going to act like it's Katy Perry's song. I'm going to create a new artist. So I might create, um, I don't know, uh, Faith Gabbana's new song um, that's coming out called Raw and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create her as an artist, sorry Faith, to use you as an example. I do want it to be fictional. Um, so it has to be by uh, from an artist that you've made up and you've built. Again, I'll show you an example of this because um, quite a few people get a little bit confused on how you need to do this, but I will show you an example of that. Um, 
Okay, digital convergence. I had lots of questions about this, um, which I'm hoping you read this slide before you emailed me questions. So I think it does explain it. Um, so clearly linking both products. So for example, put in the, uh, just put in the website on your magazine or whatever product you're doing. Uh, intertextual references between both cross-media products, for example, hiding a hidden reference to a website feature or a competition within the offline product and also driving the audience back to the offline media to search for hidden references. Um, similarity in logos, graphics, titles, sound effects. So I should be able to look at both of those products and tell that they are linked. Um, and a mixture so of material. So say you've got um, your main photo on your magazine, maybe we could have the behind the scenes photos on your website so we again we can see that they're linked okay so i sorted you through the briefs i've shown you an example of the magazine um i'm now going to show you how to start your blog because all of this coursework is going to be done online on wix on a blog um a because it shows that you can create a website which is a really really important skill to have in today's job markets um, B, because you can share the links with me and it means you'll never, ever lose any of your work because it is online um, as a website and I will have access to look at that. Um, and C, because it means I can see what you're doing and give you feedback, um, sort of live feedback, which is really useful. So hopefully you have all seen my media blog before i sent it out to you a couple of times i know some of you have looked at it some of you haven't looked there i'm going to send this link out to you um along with this video but this is my blog that i made um last year which is kind of like a guide to media so when you go on here now you will see year 13 they have their coursework on there and you've now got a tab for your coursework so if you go into year 13 and you go into NEA coursework, you will see that I have links to all of their research blogs. And these are there for you to have a look through as well. So this is year 13's completed coursework, their blog, and then they've linked to their product site as well. So if you're looking, wanting to look for examples, you've got all of year 13's examples there. Obviously some are better than others. Um, some have done different briefs so you might have to click through but as i've always shown you um veronica's is a really good example for magazine uh roofs is a great example for music video um liam has done tv so have a look at some of the examples so your tab for year 12 nea coursework looks very similar but obviously we haven't got your links on there yet you'll need to send me your links once you set it up and um, but on there i've just put the requirements um, of the brief just to remind you and I've also given you your to-do list so by next Monday you need to start your blog which I'm going to talk you through in a sec and complete your first post there's also the marking criteria on there and there is an example from another school not from our school of um, a really good research blog that you can have a look at for inspiration and again she's created a pop video which is um, she got an A star for that so it might be worth having a look at that as well. So how do you create a Wix account? Now, I had never, ever created um, a website before I created my blog. I'm not actually that good at technology, um, even though I'm a media teacher. I do have to teach myself quite regularly how to do it. But Wix is really, really easy to set up, like incredibly easy to set up. Um, so you go into Wix and you sign up with i'd say your school email address um or you can use your personal if you want but i suggest using your school email address and it'll ask you what kind of website you want to create now it doesn't matter too much because you can edit it all so just go through i'm going to say that i'm creating a blog i'm just going to close some of my tabs because hopefully that'll make this a little bit quicker Maybe not. My laptop doesn't seem to want to play ball today. Um, ah, here we go. So 
Um, you want to create your website with Wix editor. You do not want to let them create it for you because it won't look how you want it to look. So you just choose a template. Again, it doesn't really matter what the template is. For your research blog, we want it as simple and clear as possible. No sort of effects on there. It's just one page full of research. So I'm just going to click personal blog because that's going to be a pretty straightforward one that I can then go and edit. While this is loading, I'm just going to show you an example of a good research blog. So AJ, he did a magazine. His research blog is is great. So AJ's blog, he's got his ideas post. Uh, there is an image here of a magazine, but that hasn't loaded yet. So you can see his research some reason the images aren't loading. Theory. And on your to-do list, you will see when you have to do each of these posts by. So you can see I've put in deadlines. For these, it's to be confirmed because we're going to see how you get on this week um, before I start putting in the dates for that but it's really it's really straightforward i will tell you exactly what your post needs to be as you can see ages it's really simple it's literally just scroll down each post on there so we don't need it too sort of busy or cluttered it's just really for the examiner so the examiner can scroll through and see all of the research that you've completed This is still loading. Um, I think it's going to take a while. But once you're onto the screen, <coughs> it is really, really straightforward how to edit app. Excellent. OK, so you can just click on things and then edit. So instead of train of thought, I'm going to write Uh, Miss Murray research blog and I think oh that's that's a bit too big I'm just gonna make the font a little bit smaller make it bold italic however I want it I don't want this top bar so I'm just gonna delete that I don't need this bar because this would be active how to scroll from each page. And this is just a research blog. So again, I'm going to delete that. Uh, I don't want this image because I'm going to put my own image on there. So as you can see, you'll just need to sort of delete a lot of stuff first, make this really, really plain to start off with. Now, say that's all ready. Um, I'm going to start adding in my first post. So most important thing for me to tell you um, is just this little plus bar here sorry it's been a little bit laggy again so that is how I add text images all of those sorts of things so I'm just going to click on any one of these it doesn't really matter which one and you'll get your paragraph and then I can edit text so I put post one blah 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 right then what I'm going to do and then I can 
make that bigger, move it around, put it wherever I want. So I'm happy with that. I then publish it. I'm going to save and continue. You can see that saving at the top, obviously. Make sure that's saved before you close it. It's usually quicker than this. I think because I'm recording the screen, it is taking a little bit longer. Um, but for you, that should save quite quickly. And then you can view the live site, and then it'll be a live working site. Once you have set that up, the first thing you need to do to complete that is send me the link. So you can just go on and make sure you're not sending me the editor link because um that won't let me do anything this is now your working site so i can't edit it i if i go back to editor i can start editing it um but this is the site as it stands at the moment obviously it needs a lot of editing um so you're just gonna you copy and paste that link and send it to me so that I have access to your live site. So that's the first thing you need to do is set it up. Now, you might want to spend a while playing around on the site, figuring out how to do everything before you move on to actually doing your first post. There are quite a few things you need to learn, um, but all of those, it's really self-explanatory and it's really easy to sort of teach yourself how to do that. Um, obviously, ideally, we'd be in school and I'd be walking around the classroom helping you with that. Um, but if I can do it and I can teach myself how to do it, which I did to create this site, you can definitely do it. If you've got anything that you're really stuck on, obviously email me and I'll help you with that. But it does just take a little bit of play and round on it. So once you've got your research blog set up and ready to go, your first post is ideas and inspiration. So collect your research, explain why you've chosen your brief, outline your intentions. So if you're doing documentaries, for example, Tell me what documentaries have inspired you. Insert a clip of one of those documentaries. That's really easy to do on Wix, just from YouTube. Um, if you're doing a magazine, upload pictures of the magazines that have inspired you. Explain how they've inspired you. Have a look at the examples on the Year 13's coursework, how they've done this. But this needs to be really detailed. You need to be able to show the examiner, I know my stuff. I've done my research. I know what I'm doing. I have a vision. Really important that you're doing that. So that deadline is the same deadline for making your website. So you've got a week to make your website and complete your first post. Um, and then obviously send me the link for it. Um, I think that is pretty much everything I needed to talk you through. And you've probably gotten very bored of listening to my voice now. Um, the one final thing I'll show you is just an example of a really good uh, music video just to explain um, what the music video and the artist is meant to look like. So Ruth in year 13, she um, chose the music video option. So when this loads, <laughs> eventually, um, you'll see her research blog and how she has created a fictional artist. OK, um, I, again, I don't think this is going to load for me all of Ruth's graphics. Um, she's got lots of GIFs and things on here that look really good. So it's a shame if these don't load. Um, but you might be able to see them if you get them up on your laptop. So she's done her research. Oh, Jakob sent his assessment. Well done. <laughs> um, she's done her research of different artists that have inspired her. She's done her theory research, her narrative, and now she's starting to create her artist. So Ruth has used herself as her artist. Um, you don't have to. You can choose friends that are going to 
sort of act for you. Um, it's completely up to you, but she's chosen herself. So her artist is Rockwell. She's a female pop artist. She subverts the ideology of the patriarchal society. She is portrayed as a strong, authoritative female who doesn't always play by the rules. Um, she's chosen this due to being inspired by Beyonce and her queen bee image, Sasha Fierce. So she's taken images um, as if she is her artist. She's looked at um, sort of colour schemes and things that are going to inspire her artist. She's sending a storyboard for her music video. And she started to, to design her website. So she's used a song that is, it, that is a pop song that's already out there. It's by a different artist. But she's acting as if this Rockwell artist is, act, is the actual artist for this song. Um, so hopefully you can see how that makes sense a little bit more. She's also then gone on and um, completed, uh, sorry, not completed, created a Instagram for that artist. Again, creating digital convergence and artists would have social media as well. So you can do that. Um, it's a really, really good example of how to create your artist or your music video if that's what you are wanting to do um so that is pretty much everything that i need to talk you guys through um so by monday you need to start your wix account email me the link to it so i can see what you're doing and i can um, upload that onto the site and um, complete your first post with ideas and inspirations um, make sure you are looking at examples from year 13. Remember, have fun with this coursework. It's completely up to you what you do. Um, and it's really a chance for you to be creative and to almost start building a bit of, of a portfolio. If you're wanting to go into the media industry, this is really good to be able to show uh, universities or to show potential employers that you are able to create a website, you're able to create a brand, you're able to create a product. So if you're wanting to go into marketing, media, filming, editing, whatever, this is sort of an all-rounder for getting some really, really good um, experience. As always, if you have any questions, please do email me, um, or Mr Davis, or just CCS both in. Um, I really look forward to seeing these. Um, please do have a go on Wix, spend a couple of hours playing around with it before you start emailing me with questions because you will be able to figure it out on your own how to use that. Um, but obviously if you have got any urgent questions, email me and I can always call you and sort of talk you through it over the phone if you're really, really stuck. Okay, have a great day guys. Um, have fun with this and I will speak to you soon.